to today's tutorial. So today we're talking about our bookcase that I have behind me here. When we first moved in, there was absolutely nothing here. We installed this Billy bookcase and this Brian's cabinet. I have a whole blog tutorial if you guys wanna know how to do that. So this piece functions very well for us. The Brian's down below is where we keep our DVDs, our DVD player, Xbox, some board games our cards, all that fun stuff. So it functions very nicely for us. And up above, we use it as a bookshelf, displaying some pictures and books and trinkets and all that fun stuff. But I have been wanting to just add some things to it to make it look even more expensive. And these hacks that I'm gonna show you today, you don't need to build it in like this. You can do these hacks even without having this built-in look. I think this looks very nice. And like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and link it down below if you guys wanna check that out. But if you guys want to just have your own free freestanding bookcase and you want to make it look more high-end, just keep on watching. So the first tip I have for you is adding beadboard to the back of a bookcase. This really makes your eye go up and it makes the bookcase look very expensive by adding those details to the back of this bookcase. So I start by measuring the space. I had to cut these boards in sections because they weren't big enough to do the entire back of the bookcase in one section. So what I did is I measured out where the shelves were and that's where I made my seam cuts. I used a circular saw to create both my vertical and horizontal cuts. Then I put some gloves on and just used liquid nails all on the back of the beadboard. So I put the shelves back in on the bookcase to help keep the beadboard nice and secure while it was drying. And I repeated the same steps for the upper part of the bookcase as well, adding the glue and then making sure that the lines lined up with each section. Another thing to note is that when you're cutting this beadboard, you'd rather have it be a smidge too big than too small because you want to make sure that there is some nice tight tension when putting up the beadboard. Next, I just took some spackle and just filled in any of the creases that I had with the beadboard. Again, doesn't need to be perfect because the shelf is gonna be hiding this line. So my shelves are fixed, and that's another reason why I didn't worry about the seams with the beadboard at all, because I won't be moving my shelves around at all. Second tip is to add a nice lip to the end of your shelf. A nice thick shelf looks more expensive. And so for this hack, all you have to do is use lattice trim. I just use my mitered saw to make these fast cuts. All you need to do is to take a one inch finishing nail and a hammer and just use two nails per shelf. Just make sure that the lattice trim is flush with the top of your shelf. And this look really gives the illusion of a thicker shelf. So tip number three is to fill in any of the holes that you have on your shelf. And then as you can see here where the shelf, when it was first put together, there are these little gray screws that are visible. And so I'm gonna go ahead and fill those in as well, just to give it a nice finished look and it's not distracting at all. The fourth tip I have is to add crown molding. Of course, crown molding is so beautiful and it just makes everything just look more expensive and finished. So I'm just gonna use my mitered saw to cut these cuts. 
I just used finishing nails again in my hammer to install and then I took some extra lattice trim and I also put it underneath the crown molding to give it a nice finished look. So tip number five, my last final tip, is to caulk and paint everything. Caulking makes the world of difference and all you need to do is just add a little bit of caulk, run your finger along it, and it looks flawless. The last thing I'll be using on this bookcase is a four inch foam roller and the color of paint I am using is Benjamin Moore Simply White. It's my absolute favorite white. And I'm just going ahead and painting over everything, all of the holes I filled in, the beadboard, everything. Last thing I wanna share is this little painter's hack. If you guys ever need to save your rollers for a couple days because I have some spots around the house I want to touch up in the next couple of days. Just put your roller in a Ziploc bag and zip shut and this will keep the roller good for 24 to 48 hours. So that is it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please give it a huge thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe. Next week, I'm gonna be showing you how you can style these shelves, so stay tuned for that, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.